Hi, hello my dear YouTube friends. How are you doing today? And welcome to all my new viewers. My name is Mia and I'm so 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 happy you are here. Um yeah, I love getting new friends and just to let you know, when you subscribe me, you're a friend. And if you're back, welcome back. I know I've told you so many times, I appreciate every one of you. Okay? And um Right now, I'm a little over 300 subscribers. Thank you, thank you to you all. But if you will help me reach about 350, I have a surprise for you all, okay? So, um, share my video, share my channel, and you'll see soon enough. Anyway, so first, give this video a thumbs up. It really, really helps. And if you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe. There's a button right there down there and next to it there's a bell thing that choose all and you'll be notified whenever i put up a new video and yeah let me know you know write me some comments down below and answer the questions that i undoubtedly will ask you in this whipping chat as this video is so if you don't know what a whipping chat is wip stands for work in progress and chat that means i'm gonna chat your ears off for a while okay so be prepared. So my whip today, my work in progress, is this um, Josephine Wall picture that I'm doing in lieu of the event called the J Wall DP Along 2023. The picture is called Secret Garden, and um, isn't she beautiful? It is a square kit because if you know me, you know I only do square canvases. Square canvases mean that these little uh, drills that I put on is square. This is a 70 by 88 centimeter and um, I love it. This canvas, this kit was a gift from a very, very dear friend of mine. And uh, I have told her many, many times how grateful I am. I have finished two rows by now and I will put in a picture here so that you can see the progress that I've made so far. So yeah, that is the canvas. I will be using my Bella Arti Nicole trays. I really, really love those right now. And look at this teeny tiny one. I use this for when I have just a few that I need to place. So when you only have a few drills, and it's, you know, in a smaller uh, area, it is called confetti. And if you have bigger areas, like, you know, over here, I have the black and I have this over here. It's line blocking. It is, you know, color blocking that you don't need to, to change the color in your tray very often. This is my bigger Bella Di Nicole tray. I use this for the black. And yeah, otherwise than that, I will mostly be using these two diamond painting pens. This one is from Simply Tours. They are situated in France. And um, yeah, this one is a cadiered um, metallic one placer. I bought that from Amazon Deutschland. And the multi placer is, you know, just the one that comes with every kit. In here, I have my own homemade putty in the scent of gingerbread, I think. Up here in the single placer, I have a glue dot. This beautiful pen is from North Alchemist. That is a Danish turner, and I live in Denmark, just if you didn't know. In the single placer, which is, you know, um, I don't know. It comes with every pen, really. And in it, I have Super Sticky from Paddy Wax. In the other end, I have a metallic placer that I bought off of AliExpress. In it, I have some of my own Paddy again, and I don't remember the, the scent. Maybe even gingerbread again. So yeah, that is the pen. I can see I need, eventually I need to put in some more washi. If you have places that slides like this you can put in a little washi you can see i have it here but i didn't put enough in and 
to be honest, it doesn't bother me because I don't use this five places very much. So yeah, oh sorry, I just bumped you. I also use my pink tweezers from Diamond Art Club. I have learned to kind of multi place with these. So yeah, I have my my drills in these. I call them fake Elizabeth Ward containers. I buy them from a Danish web shop that is also selling diamond paintings, but I will never buy diamond paintings from them because they are not licensed. That is stolen artwork. And like I said before, I know that a lot of people can't afford licensed diamond paintings. And, you know, that is okay by me, but I prefer not to buy them. So, yeah. Let's get started. Oh, where to begin, where to begin. Um, yeah, what did I do this week? Um, see, now that I have to remember, I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, we can start with yesterday. Yesterday was Monday, and Monday is Rosa Day. If you haven't been here before, Rosa is my niece. It's my younger brother's daughter. She will be three years old in June. And um, once a week, she spent time with her auntie and uncle, mostly auntie. And we have gymnastics together. And um, yesterday was the last gymnastic class of the season because on Wednesday tomorrow we will have a yeah what is that called kind of a show you know where all the the teams from this gymnastic company is you know showing up and showing the parents and grandparents and whoever want to come what they learned this year it's kind of like it's not a competition it is more like see what we learned and um this year i have told rosa's parents that it will be okay if they come last year i told them you know to to stay away because rosa wouldn't be able to to distract herself away from her parents if she saw them, she would want to run to them and then she wouldn't, you know, show show her what we did that year. I believe this year she is mature enough that she understands that we need to do these little games that we have done, you know. There is some song, what do you call that, uh, where you... You know, I have a, a a song that you more like you say it and there is some things that you do while you say these words. Please explain down below if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, we'll do that and then we'll have a parachute in many, many colors and we'll put on a lot of, of little plastic balls and then we do, you know, we each have a little spot around the parachute and we will, you know, get the balls on the parachute to move a little. First it is a silent wind, then it is a little bit more wind and at the end it is a kind of a, a hurricane. And the, the, per, the, the, the you know, what, what we're supposed to do is to get these little plastic balls flying all over the place. The kids love it. They usually howl with laughter every time we do it, and then they have a they have a party, you know, to to run around picking up all the balls again. So um, yeah, and then we'll have this little, you know, whether there's a lot of things put up, and they you know can show how they can uh, climb over things, and they can walk a line and some of them will roll on a mat and others will do cartwheels and I don't know and yeah it is it's going to be a lot of fun um I think that this year 
is the last year that Rosa will have this gymnastics where I am a part of it because the past two years I have been on the floor with her because it is called it is called a parent child team but the past two years we have called it an adult parent adult child team because I was there and since I am not an a parent for Rosa it is you know there is no rule that say that I have to be a parent but anyway so she is turning three in June and um, that means that she, that she is eligible to move on to the next level in gymnastics and a lot of her little friends from gymnastics is going to do the same because there is a lot of them you know turning three this year so we're like okay we're, we're gonna try it and see if it's something that they're up for i mean they can always go back to the to the parent kids team again there isn't there isn't a rule that they can't but it is just a little more challenging challenging you know to be in the next one and i i hope that rosa is is ready for it um because otherwise she will return to a team where most of her you know little friends have moved on the thing that i i don't worry about it but i'm you know i'm 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 not worried that's not the word i'm like hmm, i wonder how she will do with me just sitting um close by watching how it's going um maybe she'll she'll grow with it because i just noticed this entire year she's been very observing of me but um yeah i i hope that when she sees all her little friends do the same as she is that means that she will be more confident being there on her own and I will never be far away I will be sitting right there on the stairs looking after her and she can come to me if she needs it but you know I'm also thinking that it will be so good for her to you know get this sense of I can do this on my own you know she is a little She's not afraid, but she is uncertain because in some way she is, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. She's been, cuddled isn't the right word, but she's, she has been, you know, um, I don't know. She hasn't been challenged that much from her mom and sometimes she had said to me you know when we're out there i can't do this my mom says i can't and i'm like wait what <laughs> why does your mom say you can't and then sometimes i'm like i wonder if it's an excuse from rosa uh, not to do it because she might be a little afraid or i don't know and then i then i usually tell her but Rosa, you did this before and you were so good at it. Like like climbing these these rips. Is that the word in English? Well, you know, she need to climb up and then crawl back back down, you know, to, to teach how to move your arms and your feet, your legs one at a time to not fall down again. And she does this quite okay. She she still needs to learn not to just let go with both arms because then she'll fall down and of course she won't fall down i'm right behind her and um yeah i don't know if that is the best solution because she knows that she won't fall 
maybe she'll be more careful you know when i'm not there i don't know we'll see i'm looking forward to to seeing her in the next team i'm i'm sure she'll she's going to love it and i don't know if you remembered last week where i told you i i was fairly sure that she has asthma and um my brother talked to the doctor and apparently she is going to start medication for asthma today so i am looking forward to hearing how that is going um yeah because i have been scared for her several times when we have been there and she's been running around she is wheezing and coughing and you know can't really breathe so i'm like breathe not breathe <laughs> so i'm like you know having her on my lap telling her to to take deep breaths and look at me how i'm breathing and we're taking deep breaths together and you know calming down and i'm trying to get her to not run as much because you know she didn't have any medication that i could help her with so I, I needed to to calm her down and we would take a, a sip of water and that would help a little but you know her getting the medication is amazing i just need to figure out if i need to to get some of it you know to bring it to gymnastics just in case something happens that she's getting she's getting an attack but i'm sure my brother and i will will talk it over i mean for now there is no more gymnastics this year um so from from this week it, it's just you know fun and games in our house or where, wherever we want to go go to a playground or anything it is just enjoying our time together and then in september gymnastics starts up again so yeah but i hope that i'll be allowed to to maybe show a few pictures or something if i get any from from wednesday i would love to show it to you but I need to ask parental consent. Yeah, that is a thing even over here. I even though you know I show pictures of her on my Insta not on my Instagram, but on my Facebook. I'm like, I'm not gonna show her on my YouTube without it being okay by her parents. So I, I have to ask. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is to respect her as well. I mean, when when she's getting a little older and she's telling me, Auntie, please don't release any more pictures of me. I will absolutely respect that because she is her own person. I mean, she is allowed to have her own opinions and her own feelings about what she likes and doesn't like. I mean, I don't know if it's the same in in other countries, but at least over here in Denmark, most young people, well, not most, but a lot of young people don't use Facebook. They are using, they're using um, Instagram or they're using TikTok. So, yeah, that's... That is the most important social media. I'm sorry, I have to stop you for just a minute. I see some some people walking into my driveway. I have to go see what's going on. Be right back. I'm back again. I don't know why some people use our driveway to... I don't know. They drive in there and then they drive back out or... well. These people were looking for for someone, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's not here. And then then they were like, yeah, I'm sure it's here. And I'm like, 
Yeah, you can be sure all you want, but uh, nope, <laughs> not here. Yeah, you can hear Max in the background. <laughs> he is. I don't know, he's in the talkative mood today. He's been doing that most of the day. I think most of it is because he wants to go outside to the catio and the weather has been wet all morning here. It is just cloudy and a little sunshine now, but everything is wet outside. So I'm not putting them out there because I'm I'm the one who has to clean them up afterward. So no sir. And sometimes he just wants attention. That is why he's doing it. Then because I'm in here and he can hear me talk with you guys. And he's like, mommy, come out and talk with me. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen some of the videos that I've been putting out this past week? One of them was a visit to, to the cat enclosure. Where you could see them enjoy their little their little outdoor area. We will be adding more stuff out there. We just bought some little, you know, houses for them, wooden houses, so that they, they can get some shade out there. I mean, we don't just leave them out there because we haven't, you know, we've been wanting to find some way to shade the place because in the afternoon there is full sunshine out there. There isn't really a lot of places except from the bush out there, you know, to, to hide under. And we just wanted to make sure that they don't overheat. So the door has always been open. They can come in whenever they want to, to, you know, get something to eat or just to get out of the sun. They have water out there and I make sure to change it. If not every day, then every other day. I do the same with their water inside. So yeah, now we have these two little houses on the way. I'm... <laughs> I don't know if they're, you know, need to be put together or built when they come here. But I am very sure that you will be by our side when we put them up out there. And I will try to film as they, you know, see them for the first time and if they like them. <laughs> One of them is called a a cat penthouse and you know we were trying to find it in another color but we couldn't because because it is this weird blue-ish color light blue green color and for some reason it doesn't really fit the rest of our house but you know it is more important than they get somewhere comfy to, to be out there. It is kind of like you have a, a three-story cat house. In the bottom there is a a place they can go in and then in the middle there's this little cave uh, place they can go in and then on the top, sorry I just banged you, on the top there is this little terrace or something that they can lay on too. And I'm just, it, it, this is adorable. I need this for my cats. The other one is wooden, wooden, what is it? Is it two story or just one? I can't remember. But it'll have room enough for all four of them. And, you know, the door will still be open so they can come in with an, whenever they want to. And, you know, if they want to go party, they still have to go inside. Unless they decide to go party out there. I mean, they could do that if they want to, except we don't really have a party area out there. Um, so yeah, it's so funny. I've noticed that both Max and Pelle has been... Last year, we had one of the small windows in our living room. We had that one open because then they could... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is so funny. Then they could, you know, run in through the door, run to the living room, jump up and jump out the window. And then they would just, you know, run in circles doing that for hours. So, you know, the other day I saw, I saw Max sitting in that little window and just looking. And then he turned around looking at us like, did you not forget something? I mean, hello, open the window. And, you know, I was like, no, 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 not yet. It is not warm enough outside that I'm going to have the window open, you know, all the time. I mean, the door outside is just open a crack so they can come in and out. When it's getting a little warmer, um, it'll the door will be open 24-7. We have a lock on the the cat enclosure from the inside so nobody can get in I mean that that's how we protect ourselves when you know it's nice and warm outside and the cats can just stay outside if they want to and it also helps our house cool down a little bit in the evening and the night but the door is just you know open all the time so yeah I really look forward to it getting warmer it isn't cold cold outside but it isn't you know nice and springy it has to it has to be at least 10 degrees Celsius warmer for me to call it spring warm I don't know I hope it'll be warmer in May. It usually is warmer in the months of May. And also, David's birthday is coming up in May. His birthday is on May 6th. So, uh, yeah. He's also having a vacation in May, the week after his birthday. So, from that will be March eighth he's ha that week he's having a, a a week of vacation i don't really know how much of it we're gonna spend together since you know his mom is moving into that senior home and i guess they're gonna have to start you know cleaning out her house a little so that they don't have to do all of it when, when the house is sold. So I guess I won't really be seeing a lot of him. But yeah, I can I can keep myself company. You know that. I have my knitting and my diamond painting and I have YouTube and Instagram and if that isn't enough I have a bunch of streaming services so yeah I can I can fill the time no problem at all so, yeah <laughs> I was just wondering how I what are you guys doing today while I'm talking your ears off are you working on a and a diamond painting or are you knitting are you crocheting a cross stitch um or are you taking a walk or cleaning your house i sometimes whenever i listen to other people's ribbon chats i will be you know knitting or taking a walk or something i just like you know having the company so yeah I know that some people treat these women chats as a kind of a a podcast, which is really, you know, I like that idea that you don't have to to sit on your bum to to listen to it. I really like that. I mean, mostly I am diamond painting my little heart out while listening to other people doing their whipping chats but um i mean sometimes i just need to to do something do something 
darn it, English isn't my friend today. <laughs> but I mean, if you have been here a while, I guess you're pretty used to it by now. I call it pain brain, that is, when I, you know, I forget words or um, scatterbrained or everything comes out jumbled and in the wrong order and I don't know what. I mean, you never know with me. Things can be, it can be weird. I'm sorry, I'm making a lot of noise right now. I I just needed to do something with the with the canvas it was crinkling itself up and I needed to straighten it out to prevent you know crinkling the, the canvas. I know that this is a port glue canvas and you can rarely destroy it but there is no need to to try to do it right. I am trying my very best to to take care of these canvases. I mean I'm still trying to figure out what to do with them to do with them when I'm done. Because I'm not really a I wanna hang all of them up on my wall kind of person. I have a few that I really want to hang, maybe for just a little while, and then, you know, do something with them. I was kind of hoping that, you know, some people would like to to get them, you know, if it's in a piece of art that they will like. I don't know. This one, this particular one, I have been, you know, wanting to ask the senior home where my mother-in-law moves in if this is something that they would like to to hang on their wall. Just because I think, I think, my God, English. I think that this could be a beautiful piece on their walls because it isn't, you know, um wild oh how to say it uh hold on 20 yeah i don't know does it make any sense i mean on a senior home you want uh, relaxing pieces of art you know more and more what is the word that I'm looking for? Classic pictures, maybe? And these Josephine Walls one, despite them being mythical and I don't know, it is still, you know, relaxing to look at, you know, compared to a lot of other pictures. I can ask. And if they say no, they say no. But, you know, I still have to finish it before. <laughs> I have been a little surprised at how long this is taking me. But maybe it's also because I have had a lot of, you know, other stuff going on. I have been finishing off that scarf for Edward from Enablers Outpost. And, um... I just finished packing up that package so it'll be shipped out tomorrow morning. Well, not exactly morning for me, but yeah, that one will be shipped tomorrow. And hopefully it will get to them before they do their raffle. They will have a raffle some in the middle of May, I think. To, to help them pay for Maui's big surgery. So they've been asking, you know, people with small shops and, you know, people in general that wants to, to donate uh, 
goods or homemade goods, or not even homemade, but just, you know, things that could, that they could sell in a raffle. So, yeah. So, I've been shipping some of my, my knitted cloth, this cloth, for them, you know, so they, they could raffle those off as well. Maybe they could just, you know, I'm I'm hoping that my package will get there in time. It says on the post services homepage that it'll take about six to ten days to get there. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that that is enough for that to to get to them. Otherwise, they'll just have to, you know, use some of my pictures and then ship them out once it gets to them. So, yeah. And I mean, some people would say, wait, what? You're, you're sending them this dish class? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, over here in Denmark, they're highly sought after because, you know, they are made in with cotton yarn and a lot of the the dishcloth that you can buy in the stores is made of some sort of plastic and people are trying to to look out for the environment more and more so they are wanting to to steer away from all that microplastic that you have everywhere by now and if people can't knit themselves, then they, they're they buying them from people. I mean, I usually sell, uh, yeah, what is it? One of my cloths, cloth is, mm, I sell two of them for a round, oh, I don't know, uh, is that $9 or so? Around, or is it 6 I can't remember. Sometimes the, the translation of one currency to another can be a little rough. Um... Hold on. I think around seven dollars for two of my home knitted cloths. But I mean, if you're wanting to help in a raffle, then maybe. I mean, how do they do it? If you're doing a raffle, is it that you pay for a raffle ticket and then they're drawing? A winner? I don't know. I'm sure they know how to do it and if my my knitting can help them then I'm happy. I mean I can always knit new ones and I do mostly use them to give away. I mean I can't I can't use that many myself, right? And if people want them then okay <laughs> for me those knitted cloth is like it's easy to bring and i don't have to to think a whole lot while i'm doing them you know if i'm visiting people or sitting at the doctor's office or something it's nice to have something to work on that you don't you know, you don't need a lot of brain power. And it's easy to just put away in, in a heartbeat. I mean, if a doctor calls your name, you don't have 10 minutes to to pack everything away. It's like, Mia, yes, I'm coming, you know. And, and that is easier when it's just a small project. So, yeah, that is one of those easy little projects that I'm more or less always have going so yeah and I am looking forward 
for Edward to receive his Gryffindor scarf and hearing how he's liking it. I mean, he won't likely get cold when he wears it because it is made from wool and cotton. So you have, you know, the 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 heat from the wool and then you have the cotton that will help it keep its shape so that is i i love that combination i knit i mean most of the clothes that i knit for myself and rosa is made from that cotton wool that mix of cotton and wool so yeah I've always been, you know, not laughing, but wondering aloud how both in in Britain and American, when you're buying yarn, they always say, yeah, I've been buying wool. And they're like, oh, so how much wool is in it? I mean, is it 60 or is it 50-50? And then, then they're like, no, it's acrylic. And I'm like, well, then it isn't wool you're buying. Then it's acrylic yarn. They're like, we call everything wool. And I'm like, well, you can't do that. <laughs> that is very misleading. I mean, if your yarn is basically plastic, then you can't call it wool. And then and people look at me like, who are you to tell me what to call my yarn? I'm like, I'm not telling you. I'm just wondering how you can call acrylic for wool. I mean, explain yourself, people. I don't get it. I mean, if you did that over here in Denmark, I think people would slaughter you. You can't call acrylic for wool. I mean... I don't know. I don't know if it's all over Europe. I mean, mainland Europe, that we are that specific. I don't know. It's just most people that I know here in Europe are very, uh, yeah, specific about what what kind of yarn it is that you're using. And I do know a lot of people who would never knit in acrylic for, you know, clothes for human beings. I mean, a lot of them use acrylic for um, doll clothes or blankets and stuff like that. But some of them wouldn't be caught dead in it. And I'm like, and you know, I, I don't resent acrylic in any way, except for don't call it wool. I mean, I have knitted a lot in acrylic in my time. But um, I even I even did, you know, some clothes in it, which today I wouldn't, because I know that a lot of people. Um, can't really breathe in it. I mean, some people, some of acrylic isn't easy to breathe in because it's plastic. But then when people are getting too, you know, I never wear acrylic, I'm like, I'm sorry, but are you not using a bra? Because if you look at how the bra is made, it is mainly plastic. <laughs> I mean, just, just to let you know, I mean, and the funny thing is, people never look at that. They they never look at their underwear and go, oh, I wonder what that is made of. And then some of them, yeah, that depends on, on if you buy them in some, you know, store, um, footwear, the conventional store. And I'm like, well, even my high-end, very expensive bra, I mean, it cost around $100 the bra that I have to wear uh, in order for to, you know, 
to get the right support and I don't know what. I need to, to buy very expensive bras, otherwise it'll hurt my neck more than it already hurts. Um, so yeah, and you know, I've been telling them, you know, even my Marie Jo bras have mainly plastic in them. So yeah, and that usually makes them, you know, that shuts them up pretty fast. Uh, they, you know, some of them are like, yeah, well, talk to the hand, like, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, you know, some people you just can't, you, you can't get into them, you know, you can't get through to them, that is the right word, and if they need, you know, to tell themselves that they are so much better than everybody, let them, but I'm not going to feed them. You know, I'm not letting them feed other people's lies. That is not who I am. I will tell them off. I mean, if you have known me for any length of time by now, you pretty much know that I'm I'm no bullshit. I don't I don't lie. I don't tell stories except for true ones, but. I, you know, what you see is what you get with me. And uh, yeah, I am brutally honest sometimes. Sometimes I'm just brutally honest. But I mean, I like people who are honest more than people who is not deceitful. Because I don't think anybody, well, not anybody, but most people are not into being evil on purpose. I know some people are amongst them, some of my own family, that is just there to, to look out for themselves. But even though most people are kind and loving and sometimes they just do or say things that isn't positive enough or whatever. So, um, yeah. I hope you know that I don't, I don't do that. I'm also low maintenance. I mean, you can see I don't have fancy nails. I, I do have some of those sticky, sticker nails and I am going to try them again. I just had some issues the first time that I tried them and ever since then I'm trying to, to get my nails to the, the same length which is, for some reason, not very easy for me. But I don't like them to be, I don't know, very this short. I don't know, can you see it? I would want them to be a little longer than that. But my issue is that I have very, very short, um, no, not short, but I have very brittle nails. So when they get just a little, a little longer than that, they start the breaking and yeah, I I really really would love to to have long nails. And the thing is, I can't even you know have fake nails on because I tried that years ago, you know, to have all these beautiful acrylic nails and I don't know what, but apparently. That ruins my already thin and brittle nails. So when I had them removed, professionally by the way, I had almost no nails back. I had these thin, thin, brittle nails that you could almost, you know, they were so, so, so thin. And I could, you know, they hurt so badly. If anything, you know, like this, if I went on through my nails with anything, they would hurt so bad. It felt like they it was down to the, the skin under it. So I was like, yeah, I'm never doing that again. I mean I'm I'm not really into all of that. I don't wear makeup every day. Uh I actually rarely wear wears makeup. 
I mean, you know that if you've been to my lives. Again, I'm, I'm not into that. Um, mostly because it is time consuming and I don't have a lot of energy to do that. And, you know, if you're into doing makeup and you won't do videos without makeup, yay you. I mean, I just don't have the energy and I never really learned how to do makeup. I can put on some mascara and that is it. I don't know how to get the full beautiful mascara. I have no idea how to do that. I just put it on and that is it. And I can put on some some eye shadow and stuff like that. I won't promise that it looks good, but I can do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, thankfully David isn't isn't keen on having a high maintenance wife or girlfriend. Sometimes he, he comes home and he tells me the stuff that his co-workers have been telling him about their wives. And he's like, damn. When one evening he came home and he was like, That's, that co-worker here told me that his wife spent, you know, hours and hours and hours on a by by the haircut the hairdresser and he could hardly see a difference you know and i was like what and he told me what did she give uh i don't know um like how much would that be it was several hundred dollars like three three four hundred dollars that she had paid for that visit to the hairdressers and I was like what what did they do I mean did she get extensions and coloring and I, I, what <laughs> it's like I told him when I was younger and I know stuff were cheaper but about 20 25 years ago 23 years ago I would go to the hairdressers every four to five weeks and I would get my hair cut and I would get my you know a new coloring to my hair some of sometimes it would be just one color other times it would be you know several colors and I gave the same every time maybe because you know I knew the the woman who had the hairdresser so I know I got it cheap or at least I got it a little cheaper than than the normal price but I was still how do you spend that much money on your hair I mean <laughs> I haven't had my hair cut for oh I don't know when was it that I donated my hair Two years ago, yeah, I donated my hair two years ago and I haven't had it cut since. It, I do need uh, to get it cut. Some of the, the ends is getting a little dry. So, you know, it needs to be cut. But I, I refuse to pay a lot of money to, to get my hair cut because why? <laughs> You know, when it comes to that, I'm cheap. I don't want to pay a lot of money for something that I feel like, well, I could do it myself then. I don't because I, I don't have the strength in my hands to do it. And my, my neck and shoulders just hurt too much if I try to do it. But I mean, I have had... Some of my friends cut my hair in the past just because, you know, they told me, oh, I can do that. And like, okay. And other people were like, what if it doesn't look good? What if they do it wrong? And I just looked at them and like, it's hair. It, it's going to grow out again. I mean, easy now. <laughs> I mean, 
it isn't the end of the world if it isn't perfect. I mean, I usually tie up my hair in a ponytail or, you know, braid it. So who cares if it's 100% straight? I mean, I, I wouldn't notice it anyway. Well, maybe I would, but, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. As, as long as I can put it up in a ponytail and braid it, I'm happy. I'm not really that hard to, to satisfy when it comes to my hair. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I'm not high maintenance. Oh, uh, were you in my live this Sunday? I had a lot of fun and there were people there who I haven't seen in a long time, which I was happy to see them again. And we did have a lot of fun. We were talking about desserts. So if you weren't there, please let me know down in the comment field. What is your favorite dessert and why? I would love to know. <laughs> a lot of people were like, now I'm hungry. Yeah, me too, people. I mean, all that dessert talk left me hungering for dessert. <laughs> but it was fun. And I love, love talking with you people. I enjoy when you're there and... I love to hear your opinions about everything and nothing. And, uh, yeah, David was gone a lot of the day Sunday. He was out um, riding his gravel bike with a bunch of his co-workers. They are training to do a long bike ride in, is it June? I think it's June. Um, so yeah, they, they've been practicing a little together and yesterday David drove on his bike, he drove around, what did he say, 86 kilometers. I have no idea what that is in miles and everything, but he, he was, he was Bent when he came home. He was relaxing. <laughs> also because he had to get up early to be there in time, you know, to meet the rest of them. So, uh, yeah. But I'm proud of him. I mean, isn't it amazing that he, he can do that? I mean, he just get on that bike and gone he is. He tries to get on the bike, you know, a few times during the week. But it also depends on how much he has to do otherwise, you know. Right now, there's a lot of things that they have to do with with his mom before she has to move into that care facility. She's moving in May the 1st. So, you know, they have to move furniture and they have to buy a lot of stuff and, yeah. But I'm also, you know, like, you need to to take care of yourself and your, your mental health. And I know him riding his bike is a part of that. He's... I mean, he, he tells me that when he's out there and the wind is blowing, it's like the wind is blowing everything away from his from his head. Because, you know, he's basically just focusing on, on you know, finding his way and clearing his head. Which I'm like, I'm all for that. Please do that. <laughs> because he needs it. I mean, he he has a lot of... I don't know, responsibilities on his shoulders because he also has a sick wife. I mean, I'm, I'm not capable of doing, you know, a lot of the things other people can do. And I'm, I'm not happy about it, but, you know, that is, that is it, what it is. And I try to do whatever I can. 
But the fact is, there is things that I can't do. And David has to do it. No matter how much I, I think it shouldn't be that way. So yeah. I'm pretty sure that by now I have been... Hold on. Yeah. I have been chatting about an hour by now. Haven't I? Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I need to wrap this, this thing up. And, um... I will I will see you in another video. I was I'm very very happy that you wanted to spend your, some time with me. And um I hope you enjoyed this time, you know, getting to know more about me and my life and I hope to have more interesting things to tell you next time. Maybe I have some things to tell you about Rosa and our show on Wednesday. And hopefully my brother will let me show you some pictures or some video for, from it. Yeah, and um, again, don't forget to give my video a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed and answer some of my questions. And... Um, yeah, I have videos on Tuesday. I have videos on... I have my Whip and Chat on Tuesdays. I have some sort of unboxings on Friday. And then I have my Mia's Fairy Tale World on Saturdays where I read a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale. And then on Sundays I have my lives. And I would love it if you would attend my life. It is fun and relaxing and yeah. So I would love it if you would show up. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.